Again, the Mutual Network brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The shooting war is over, but your Red Cross is still in there fighting, planning new invasions, invasions against suffering, hunger, and loneliness. And speaking of loneliness, let's not forget the low-point boys still overseas. There are more than 1,500,000 of them spread out all over the world, including God-forsaken islands in the Pacific. Many of us already have forgotten, but your Red Cross never forgets. It's still there with our rear guard, helping to make life a little brighter, helping to ease the burden. Yes, the job of the Army of Occupation, according to both Generals Eisenhower and MacArthur, would be ten times tougher if it were not for the Red Cross activities overseas. Now... The Shadow. The Shadow, who pays the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago on the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Ghosts Without a Face. Third act, Mr. Johnson. Curtain going up. Third act, Mr. Johnson. Is anything wrong? Maybe he's not in his dressing room. Oh, I'd better have a look. Mr. Johnson. Oh, oh there you are, sir. At your dressing table. You're still in your dressing robe. Sir, that curtain is up, sir. Raise it high, Billy. That pack of stupid injury will never gaze upon the handsome face of Gaylord Johnson again. What's the matter, Mr. Johnson? You sound sick. Yes. Yeah. In dying, you see only my back. Now, now, Billy, look upon my face. Mr. Johnson, your face is bleeding. Ripped and slashed with my own razor blade. There's blood on your arms. Your wrists are cut. I cut them. I died. No, but they killed me. They spurned me off. Let me go. But they can't escape the horror that will return to them after death. Let me go. Let me go. You see me again. I return from the dead to haunt this theater. For eternity! Help somebody! Mr. Johnson killed himself! Mr. Johnson dead! He killed himself! Help! Yes, Mr. Ames, I have heard stories about your theater. That it's haunted that some fantastic ghost without a face rooms about at night in that house. The police searched the place thoroughly. There's nothing more they can do, and that's why I've come to you, Mr. Cranston. As an amateur criminologist, can't you help me track this thing down? You say you've actually heard this ghost, that you've seen it? Others have too, Mr. Cranston. Actors I've hired and tried to rehearse there. I can't keep a cat. Let's try this, Mr. Ames, if you want to open your theater again. Rehearse in some other place until the night your new play opens. On opening night, have the entire theater search thoroughly to be sure no one can be hiding. This thing is a ghost. You can't find it. Mr. Ames, you and I both know there aren't any such thing as ghosts. I've seen and heard. Here are Johnson's ghost with its face slashed and bloody. It's it, it, horrible. So horrible that it almost drove Billy, our young stage manager, out of his mind. His mind is still affected. 
His memory is gone completely. I talked to him at Cranston. He doesn't remember a thing. Dreams, it seems to me the best thing to do to help you is to deliberately invite your ghost to appear. For you. Yes. Whatever it is, it's apparently trying to keep your theater closed by frightening people away. It's certain to do something if you open your house. Well, I don't think it's wise, Mr. Cranston, but I'll do it if you insist. Good. I'll be there with you to see if I can see and hear this ghost of Gaylord Johnson. Dark old place. Backstage, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, first act's over, darling, and so far no ghosts have appeared. Mm-hmm. Oh, I-, I think we better wait here in the wings out of the way until Mr. Ames comes off stage. Yes. The place seems to be going very well. Ames is really spursed this one, hasn't he? Yeah. But now, what really happened here that night a year ago? Well, the third act had just started, as I understand, when Billy, the young stage manager, came running to Mr. Ames in a terrified, hysterical condition, telling him that Gaylord Johnson had killed himself. And when Mr. Ames reached the dressing room, the body had disappeared? Yes. There was blood on the floor and the dressing table and on the boy where Johnson had grabbed him before he died. And no trace of the body has ever been found? No. I still don't see how it could possibly have been taken from the theater that night. That stage was crowded with actors. But the fact remains that Never has been found. Oh, Mr. Cranston, this way. Well, hello, Mr. Ames. Well, how do you like the play? Oh, it's very good, Mr. Ames. Where did you find that wonderful old actress, Madame Chambetta? Uh-huh. Because she did a magnificent bit in that last scene. Uh, okay. She's been in this country since the war. She's a real trooper, Miss Lane. Uh, here she comes now. Oh? Uh, Madame Chambetta. Ah, oh, Mr. Ames, if he goes. The other way down there. And here are two new friends of yours. Proof. Miss Lane, Mr. Clinton. How do you do, Madam Chambetta? It's a beautiful guy. Thank you. Thank you. So kind. I must change my costume now. I will see you later. Perhaps after we go. Second act. Waiters. Waiters, please. I uh, suppose you noticed, Mr. Cranston, I asked the police to surround the place. Let the place search tonight? Thoroughly. Before any of the actors came in, there couldn't be any human hiding here. There go the lights, come on. Oh, yes. Well, I think we'd better stay backstage here. I wish you would, both of you. Uh, we can stand right here. Oh. Goodness, it's awfully dark. Yes, we can really see. Yeah, it's quite a start. Stay back the curtain. No! No! What's that scream? That wasn't on stage. Take your hands from my throat. Come from one of the dressing rooms, isn't it? Madam John Better. Where's the dressing room? Quickly, from this way. Down this car here. Come on, quick. Something horrible is happening. Uh, Mr. Runk. The door is locked. Help me break it in. Oh, hurry, hurry. Once more, Mr. Ames, hurry. There it goes. Yeah, there. There's no one in. The room's empty. Well, we just heard a voice calling for help from this room. It's the ghost. Johnson's ghost. He's killed her. He's killed her and spirited her body away. Lamont, what's happening in that theater? First a young boy and now Madame Trombetta? I don't know yet, Margot. I'm going back there tonight and find out. Oh, darling, you've gone there before at night and the ghost has never appeared to you. I think he might this time, Margot. If he's killed Madame Trombetta and hidden her body. Why do you? I was just ghost chasing before, Margot. This time, I think we may find a killer. Oh, Lamont, look at that old thing. Oh, darling, so up. It's almost as if it was challenging. And it's probably hidden plenty of secrets. It's been standing there for years. Darling, I'm suddenly very afraid. Let, let's wait. Darling, stick close to me. I will go down this alley here to the stage door. Well, all right. I guess I'd go through most anything to get even with whatever it was that harmed poor Billy. The old actor. Yes. Well, here's the door. It's so dark, I can't see a thing. Come on, the door's open. I haven't touched it yet. And who are you? Who's coming into this theater? 
Go away. Get away quickly. I'm the Mount Cranston. Who are you? What are you doing here? Well, I'm part of the night man and the janitor. Hey, I, I've seen you two before. Well, you best keep away from here. Mr. Ames has given us permission to come here any time, Pops. Well, tonight maybe you come once too often. Why do you say that? You heard the voice tonight. In there. Louder. Angrier. Angrier than before. You've heard the ghost too? It tells me to follow. But I know that there is death and madness where it leads. But why do you stay here then, Pops? Well, there's not many a job open for an old fellow like me. I'm safe if I don't listen. But now, don't you two be going in there. We've got to tonight, Pops. You stay here at the door. Don't let anyone else in. We'll call you if we need you. All right. But remember, I warned you. I can't see anything. Here. Here, take my hand. Oh, have you got the flashlight? No. No, no, I, I thought you had. Great. Really, madame? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Darling, just what do you expect to find I'm going to take a look at Johnson's dressing room first. That was where Johnson died and Madame Trombetta was killed. I wish I'd waited outside the park. So, Theodore, there's certainly the perfect background for a ghost story. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh! What's the matter, darling? Come on. There's the body hanging by its neck. I, I just want to know. Oh, there is something. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> If you bumped into one of those big sandbags that's suspended at the rest. Oh, no. No. <laughs> right, come on, darling. We'll get this over with as fast as possible. Oh. Let me see. The dressing room that Johnson used is just down here, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. That's it right there, isn't it? Yes. Come in, my friend. Wait. There's a voice coming from inside the dressing room. Let go of it. It is. We're going to have a look at it. Come in, my friend. And gaze upon... Lamont, there's someone sitting there at the dressing table. Yes, it does look like someone. My face. A ripped and bloody face. Oh, sorry. It's the killer Johnson's voice. The horror of my face will drive men mad. I'm going after that thing. The one is falling. What is it? Nothing but a stage dummy, Mark. What? Used in that dungeon scene, someone threw it on this dressing table chair. But there was a voice in this room, Lamont. I heard it. Yes, I heard it too, Margot, but there's no one in here but us. Go! 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 Before the horror strikes. Well, now the voice is coming from somewhere on the stage. Stay here, Margot. I've got to go after it. Lamont, don't leave me. Lamont, take me with you. Go! Go! Blundering fool! Lamont, where are you? Over here, Margo. Well, here, it's... take my hand. It's no, you are no madness. Oh, Margo, you we can look upon terror and death. Uh, Margo, 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 look! Well, well, darling, it's so dark I can't see you. You just reach out your hand and I'll... I'll... Oh, well, there you are. What's going... But Lamont, this isn't you, is it? No. Lovely lady, you are holding the hand of a ghost. <laughs> A year ago today, General Courtney Hodges and his first division were battling their way through the streets of Cologne. Your Red Cross girls were there, directly behind the lines, dispensing cheer and donuts to the battle-weary G.I.s. Today, your Red Cross is still there with the Army of Occupation. We have silenced the Wehrmacht, but your Red Cross still fights a battle, a battle against loneliness. For the men now overseas, the warmth and hospitality of the Red Cross Recreation Club is the one bright spot in their arduous task yet to be completed. At home, their comrades in the hospitals and other veterans struggling to adjust themselves to civilian life are also benefited by your Red Cross. More than 4,300 Red Cross hospital workers assisted servicemen in our veterans' hospitals during the year of 1945. And 450,000 veterans' claims were handled by local Red Cross chapters during the same period. So, give generously to your American Red Cross for its wide and diversified program of service to humanity. Now, back to the shadows. Search for the horror.
terrible ghost in a haunted theater, Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane have become separated on the huge, dark stage. Thinking the figure in the dark beside her was Lamont, Margot has taken its hand. When she discovers it is the ghost of the dead actor, they come to find. Let me go. Let me go. Let go of my hand. Let me go. Darling, darling, it's Lamont. Oh. Oh, Lamont, no. No, I felt the cold, dead hand of the ghost. No, it was the ghost. ghost that held you. I must have frightened it away. Oh. Oh, darling. I'm sorry. I well, I'm home, aren't I? I, I must have fainted. You did, darling, and I brought you home with Pop's help. Well, what happened to you? Your clothes were all torn? Something dropped me through a trap door on that stage. Well, Lucky I found my way out of that cell and up through the orchestra pit. There are ghosts there, aren't there? There is something horrible in that pit. Yes, Margot. Something horrible, but not ghosts. I'm sure of that now. No ghost would have to resort to such earthly tactics as dropping me through a trap door to get me out of the way. Who oh, then, Lamont? Who could it be? I don't know, Margot. I suddenly thought of someone who might help me out. Who? The only living person who saw Gaylord Johnson before he disappeared. Billy, the young stage manager who went to his dressing room to call him that night. His memory's gone. I might be able to get through to him to help him, Margot. He's going to hear the voice of the shadow when I visit him tonight. Is it a voice? Can you hear me, Billy? I am your friend. Friend? Yes, Billy. Try to remember. It's curtain time for the third act. Curtain time? Time for the third act, Billy. Call the actors on stage. Call the actors? Call them, Billy. Places, everyone. Places? Places, everyone? Now call the star, Billy. Call Mr. Johnson. No. No. Hurry, Billy. Call Gaylord Johnson. The curtain's up. Up? The curtain's up? Hurry, there's not much time now. He's in his dressing room. Yes. Mr. Johnson. In his dressing room. The door's closed, Billy. Mr. Johnson. Third act. Places, please. That's it, Billy. Curtain's going up. Try the door, Billy. Maybe something's wrong. The door wasn't locked. Then open it quickly. No. No. Open the door, Billy, quickly. The curtain's up. Yes. Yes, open the door. There's Mr. Johnson at his dressing table in his robe. He's turning. He's turning now. He's yes, turning to me. All right, Billy, what did you see? I saw him. He got up and came toward me. I saw his awful bleeding face. And and then he... And then he... Then he dropped dead at your feet? He fell. I thought he was dead. But you don't know for certain? No. No, I was scared and ran out for help. I don't know whether he was dead or not. You do remember, Billy. The shadow has awakened your mind. The shadow? The shadow? Who are you? I'm your friend, Billy. Yes, my friend. The voice in the moonlight. The shadow, you've helped me. you helped the shadow too, Billy. Go back to sleep now. In the morning, you will remember. The shadow will discover the secret of the ghost without a face. <laughs> I don't care what Billy told you, Lamont. Even if Taylor Johnson is alive, just the sight of this theory gives me a chill. I'm sure we're on the right track this time, Margot. Here's the stage door. Who's there? Is that you, Mr. Lane? No, Pops. It's Mr. Cranston, Miss Lane again. Uh, no, no. Not tonight. They can't let you go in this place tonight. Why, Pops? But I'm going. I'm leaving here. I can't stand this job anymore. What happened, Pops? It's that voice. The ghost again. Stronger and stronger each night. Tonight I nearly followed. Now, Pops, lock up. You'll be able to keep your job. I think we can put the finishing touch on your ghost tonight. You just watch the door. If I need you, I'll call. Come on, Margo. Hang on to me this time. Give me the flashlight on. Here you are. Are we going back to that dressing room again? No. 
Let's have a look around here for a moment. On stage. Oh, what a dark And it's so big. Look, shine the light up there. And just look how high that ceiling is. Mm-hmm. And way up there, there's, there's a little wooden balcony running all the way around. See it? It's a catwalk, Margo. The stagehands hang the sets from there, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on, darling. Lamont, that heavy sandbag. Mm-hmm. Right above us. It's swinging. It's falling. Oh, look out. Lamont! Darling, you all right? Oh, oh yes. I... I guess so. Bless you, we're looking up. Yes, a moment later and we just... Lamont, you know that something is trying to kill us. Yes. I think our ghost is desperate. Looks like it's going to be a fight for the end. Oh, Johnson's dressing room down that hallway. Yes. Yes. I come when you call. Look, it's Pops. They're across the stage. I come. I hear the door. Pops, I'm the dressing room, Margo. The door's closing. Come on, Margo, quickly. The door's locked again. I'll help him. Hurry. Get closed, Margo. Keep back. Are you all right? He disappeared through that door. Out the door to the stage. Get him. Get him quick. Stay here with Pops, Margo. I've got to get our ghost this way. Right, right. I'll, I'll help. Just put your arm on me and let me get you. Put on the couch. Oh, back in a Johnson was still hiding in that theater. Well, how did Johnson disappear from his dressing room that night after he told Billy he killed himself? The door to the furnace room was right next to his. That's where he went down and changed into Pop's coveralls and beard. He'd actually had to cut his hands to leave traces of real blood. Realistic school of acting, is that it? Besides being a superb makeup artist, he disguised himself as Madame Trombetta when he heard the theater was opening again, used a heavy accent and plenty of veils, killed himself off again to frighten people away. Yes, but how did he manage so that his voice as the ghost seemed to be right in the dressing room with us that first night? It was actually in the next dressing room and spoke through the ventilator and ran out onto the stage. I couldn't speak. But, but why? Why did Gaylord Johnson want to keep that theater closed? Mr. Ames told me that 
By the second act of Johnson's play, he knew it was a flop. He told Johnson he was going to close it that night. Ames said Johnson threatened him, seemed actually unbalanced with rage, and swore that no one else would ever star in that theater again. That's a strange, twisted ego, playing the starring role of a ghost. Yes, and what a fantastic performance. Playing the parts of Madame Trombetta, Old Pops, and the ghost. Then there weren't any murders after all, were there? No, Margot. The only life Gaylord Johnson took was his own, when he tried to kill the shadow and fell through that broken railing tonight. The shadow returns in just a moment. Since Pearl Harbor, over 500,000 victims of 869 domestic disasters have been given food, clothing, shelter, and medical care by your Red Cross. Yes, even in spite of war, Red Cross carried on on the home front, for disaster is no respecter of war. When tragedies occur, Red Cross disaster workers are on the scene immediately. They feed, clothe, and shelter the needy victims, give medical care to the injured, and stay at their side through the long period of rehabilitation. But your Red Cross is present not only in time of disaster, it is also with our men still overseas, our wounded in the hospital, and our veterans who are struggling to try and readjust themselves to the problems of civilian life. The Red Cross is G.I. Joe's home away from home, and wherever he sees the sign of the Red Cross, he knows that America isn't really thousands of miles away. So give generously to your American Red Cross for its wide and diversified program of service to humanity. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, the Mutual Network will bring you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadows daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. Remember, friends, give generously to your American Red Cross for its wide and diversified program of service to humanity. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.